ground running. Um, and uh, you know the way that WWE is now. I mean, <clears throat> uh, we've got like Scotsman, Irishman, uh, Englishman, Welshman. Uh, you know, we have uh, Mexican, Spanish. Um, South African, obviously, and I think it'd be great to have an Australian superstar. And I don't see why not. And I think, I personally think it's only a matter of time before it does happen. That's the way WWE is going right now. It's a global company, um, and it shows that all the superstars, the, the, uh, the superstars are there. Even like Jinder Mahal and Great Cali is such. So I'm I hope, I hoping, maybe uh, I'm hoping we have an Australian superstar really soon. And who knows? You know, there's a lot of youngsters here in this crowd too. We may have another. Uh, uh, Australia will be superstar in the 10 to 20 years time, you know, so that'd be great. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. So the sooner the better. You are welcome to move here, by the way, if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of sunshine. It's a 16-hour trip to work every day. Yeah, <laughs> good point, good point. This I have that here, Miles. Um, what inspires you to become a professional wrestler? Um, what inspired me to become a professional wrestler? Uh, what inspired me to come to WWE is that I just love, I've always loved WWE. I've loved watching that, I love the superstars, I was a big Macho Man, Randy Savage fan. Yeah. Mr. Perfect. Yeah, well, there's the sheep again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Macho Man fan, uh, Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. I've, I've been influenced by a lot of huge uh, superstars uh, when I was your age. And, um, you know, I never stopped loving WWE, you know. Um, and even though my dad tried to make play football for years, I literally, I just still, was mentioned was WWE, and I said to myself, you know, I, I, I had a lot of critics um, over the years growing up, and when I tell people I want to do this, a lot of people always telling me I can't do this, I can't do that, you can't do whatever, you're, you're dreaming and cop on, and, and you know, get a grip on reality. But the thing is, I've learned is that you know, um, if you believe this, if you believe you want to do something, you do your whole heart, you give it 110 percent, you want to do, if you got a dream to follow, whether it's Playing for you know rugby for Australia, cricket for Australia, whether you want to be a doctor, whatever you want to be, uh, whether it be the WWE, if you put your heart and soul into it and give it 110 percent and you're true to yourself, you can literally achieve anything. Great answer. Hey, don't you miss? Um, oh wait, yeah, pretty good. Uh, I think it was last year at WrestleMania. Um, you were the United States champion versus Daniel Bryan. Uh, I think that match was uh, before WrestleMania actually started. Uh, how does it feel now? Like it was a radio match. Yeah. People are listening to the radio, you'll probably hear it. It was like an old school match, yeah. Sweet. Uh, how does it feel now, like in a, like a year's gone by, and now you two again are facing, but this time it's for the world title, as opposed to like you know the US title? Uh, how does it feel? Well, last year it really was uh, a huge disappointment, because I knew that me and Daniel Bryan could uh, literally bring something special to WrestleMania. Um, we're very both physical uh, superstars. Um, we're both kind of shy of you know taking the beating or giving the beating, and uh, we had some really good matches. Um, as opposed to you know what happened last year, I think it shows that no matter you know what happens, there's a, you know things go up and down, and you know you can't let things affect you. And I think me and Daniel uh, literally saw this, and we just worked literally five times as hard, and we determined not to miss out on WrestleMania again. Um, and it just shows that now we're picking on each other for the World Heavyweight Championship. And I think that uh, the same thing again goes. There's a lot of great matches on the show. There's obviously, uh, I know WrestleMania Air is here on April 2nd, 9 a.m. on main event. And I think that, uh, <clears throat> I believe that like, you know, with Triple H and, and Undertaker and with Shawn Michaels and Helm the Sale, with John Cena and The Rock, obviously once in a lifetime match, uh, Jericho and Punk taking each other. I, you know, I believe there's a lot of competition for great matches in that show. I know both me and him, regardless, we're obviously each one of us want to walk out world heavyweight champion, but uh, you know, he's definitely want to put on a great match as well. Got a question up here, Chris? Okay. Hi, Bella. <laughs> Stand up there. There you are, actually. How are we doing? All right. You wear the John C is that John Cena t shirt? It's a raw t shirt. That's a real one, okay. You're all right then. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name? Ryan. Nice to meet you. What's the question? Uh, I wanted to ask, how did it feel when you won the Royal Rumble? That was, uh, to me, you know, so I've achieved an awful lot in uh, a short time, a couple of years. But the Royal Rumble win was really, really special. It was something that not many people can claim they've won. Uh, it was the 25th anniversary. 
and um, it just was it was a very emotional time for me because that moment there within the Royal Rumble and bro kicking Jericho um, off the uh, apron to me was literally I tell you what it was like all the emotions I had of missing out WrestleMania last year literally just overflowed into you know it was literally I thought like it was a kind of a low point when I missed out Mania at 27 and, and then to win the Rumble I know it's going to be the main event at 28 well. It was just literally the opposite feeling. It was like I just can't believe, you know. I just a lot of a lot of things uh, went through my mind. Like the disappointment, everything was gone. And it was just pure elation, and uh, it's definitely be, it definitely is the highlight of my career so far. I'm gonna ask um, a question for myself. Um, were you Bono's bodyguard? No, I mean um, I did uh, security a long time ago in a which call it when, in a nightclub in Dublin. He used to come in there all the time, so I do personal security for him. But now that in fact I'm a much bigger star than Bono, uh, <laughs> um, you know, he's always looking for autographs off me and everything and t-shirts and stuff and just wants to hang around with me and I'm like, Bono, listen, it's crap on me style, fella, you know what I mean? <laughs> Things look when he borrows money off me as well, that's... Yeah, he still owes me a fiver. <laughs> hey, Seamus? Yep. Um, I've gone through Spinal Futures and Knee Reconstructions, just like some of you superstars had. I've seen you guys go through the surgeries and come back weeks and months later. How how do you guys get over it so quickly? Uh, it's a good question. What we do, in the, this actually leads me to a great, uh, great point, actually. Um, what we do is very, very physical. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I've been hurt, I've been dropped on my neck before I even went to WWE. I've had some near falls with a you know, slight tear in my knee and everything. And I know Wade Barrett, for example, a couple of weeks ago, uh, completely dislocated his elbow, and Mark Henry torn his groin. I mean, there's lots of things in there, but the thing is, it's like there really is no simple solution to coming back quick. It's just literally, it's, it's all dedication, and sometimes it can be looked at how fast you heal, or it can also be a dedication to superstar, how quickly they want to get back. Um, so, I mean, that's the problem with what we do. There's, there's injuries and, and, and uh, risks that we do every day. So, I mean, it's, we got definitely got to look, get looked after. Uh, as best possible, the best surgeons and best uh, you know physicians and stuff like that to come back. And, uh, but uh, I definitely tell all of you, like you know, what we do in the ring and what highly trained superstars. And uh, I, I don't 